And I'm back. This is part two. We left off on verse 10. It says, See, I am coming speedily. Verse 11, hold what you have that no one takes your crown. Okay. We're going to go down to verse 12 now. So he who overcomes, I shall uh, read the rest of this. He who overcomes, I shall make him a supporting post in the dwelling place of my Elohim, and he shall by no means go out. And I shall write on him the name of my Elohim and the name of the city of my Elohim, the renewed Yerushalayim, which comes down out of the heaven from my Elohim and my renewed name. He who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the assemblies and to the messenger of the assembly in Laodicea. Write the Omain, the trustworthy and true witness, the beginning of the works of, El of the creation of Elohim, says this. I know your works, that you are neither cold nor hot. I would that you were cold or hot. So, because you are lukewarm and neither cold or nor hot, I'm going to vomit you out of my mouth. Because you say, rich I am, and I am made rich, and need none at all, and do not know that you are wretched and pitiable and poor and blind and naked. I advise you to buy from me gold refined in the fire so that you become rich in white garments so that you become dressed so that the shame of your nakedness might not be shown and anoint your eyes with ointment so that you see. As many as I love, I reprove and discipline. So be ardent and repent. See, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I shall come into him and dine with him as he and he with me. To him who overcomes, I shall give to sit with me on my throne, as I also overcame and sat down with my father on his throne. He who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the assembly. So as we go to verse 12, we read the supporting post in the dwelling place of my Elohim. Let's look at 1 Kings 7. We always need scripture to interpret scripture and make sense of what we're reading. Okay. A supporting post, a column, a pillar, what you want to call it. This is 1 Kings chapter 7. We're going to look at verses 13 through 21. And Sovereign Shlomo sent and brought Hiram from Zor. Masons would love this particular part here because this is what their whole uh, philosophy is based upon as far as uh, Hiram Abif, okay, and uh, his uh, his expert Masonic, and I mean uh, Masonic in the sense of his uh, building capabilities. But we know that Masonry is not just about laying cornerstones and building buildings. It's a little more secretive than that for some reason. I won't really get into the gap and digress we're worried about how to be saved and how to uh, be redeemed from amongst this generation and amongst men sovereign Shlomo sent and brought Hiram from Sor he was the son of a widow from the tribe of Naphtali and his father was a man of Sor a bronze worker and he was filled with wisdom and understanding and skill in working with all kinds of bronze work notice that Mashiach's feet are like bronze okay refined in fire and so these people are going to be supporting columns the supporting posts in the dwelling place of Elohim are their feet going to be bronze too so he came to Sarban Shlomo and did all his work and he cast two columns of bronze each one 18 cubits high and a line of 12 cubits measured the circumference. Two columns of bronze. Can you say Adam first, Adam second, Adam? And he made two capitals of cast bronze to put on the tops of the columns. And the height of one capital was five cubits and the height of the other capital was five cubits. Alatis were network with wreaths of chain work for the capitals which were on the tops of the columns. Seven chains for one capital and seven for the other capital. And he made the columns and two rows of pomegranates above the network all around to cover the capitals that were on top and so he did for the other capital and the capitals that were on top of the columns in the hall were in the shape of lilies four cubits and there were capitals above also on the two columns by the bulge which was next to the network and the pomegranates were 200 in rows on each of the capitals all around 
and he set up the columns by the porch of the sanctuary, or in Hebrew called the Hakal. And he set up the column on the right and called its name Yakin. And he set up the column on the left and called its name Boaz. Okay, Yakin and Boaz, the columns. So, if this particular assembly in Philadelphia is um, doing what they're supposed to be doing, they will be a supporting post or a column in the sanctuary of Elohim. And that individual shall by no means go out. They shall forever reside in the dwelling place of the Father, his temple, because they will be the temple themselves. Okay, and write his name on them, as well as uh, the name of his Elohim, and the name of the city of his Elohim, which is the renewed Jerusalem. Okay, so let's look at uh, Jeremiah twenty-three, verses five through eight. Jeremiah, chapter twenty-three, verses five through eight. <coughs> it reads on this wise. See, the days are coming, declares Yah, when I shall raise for Dawid a branch of righteousness. Back to the sovereign of Dawid. This is the key of Dawid because his seed is going to sit on the throne. He shall raise for Dawid a branch of righteousness and a sovereign shall reign and act wisely and shall do right ruling and righteousness in the earth. In his days, Yehuda shall be saved and Israel dwell safely. And this is his name whereby he shall be called Yahweh Sidu Kenu or Yah our righteousness. Therefore, uh, see the days are coming, declares Yah, when they shall no more say, as Yah lives who brought up the children of Israel out of the land of Mitzrayim, but as Yah lives who brought up the and led the seed of the house of Israel out of the land of the north, and from all the lands good morning, where I had driven them, and they shall dwell on their own soil. Okay, so the name of the renewed city is Jerusalem. That is a geographic location that is in the land of Israel, which will be the kingdom, the capital of the kingdom of heaven on earth, restored. Okay. He who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the assemblies. What is the Spirit saying? Okay. It is saying. Focus your eyes on Jerusalem, on the east. Look to the east, my brother. Look to the east. Okay. So next we read the assembly of Laodicea. And he says that, uh, he says that on name, the trustworthy and true witness, the beginning of the creation of Elohim says this. Crucial, the beginning of the creation of Elohim says this. Who is the beginning of the creation of Elohim? Well, let's go to Proverbs 8. Proverbs Mishle 8. We're going to start at the 22nd verse. We're going to go down to the 30th verse. It reads on this wise Yah possessed me, the beginning of his way. This is known as wisdom. This is a chapter about wisdom, Hachma. But Hachma is also understood as Torah. And we know that Yahushua is the Torah or the Word made flesh, okay? But the deep thing is the word is not the creator. The creator is transcendent to his word. It emanates from him. Okay. So the Trinity concept, which is a pagan idolatrous concept from the beginning, because we know that the Shema and the declaration of faith of Israel daily made twice, twice a day is Yah is one. Okay. Not three. Yah is one. He created his son. He is the beginning of the creation of Elohim. This is why, again, Proverbs 8, verse 22, Yah possessed me, the beginning of his way. The beginning of his way. He was with him in the beginning, yes, because he was the first thing made in spirit. Okay? As the first of his works of old. Let me go back. Yah possessed me. Proverbs 8, 22. Yah possessed me. He filled me. He 
possess me, okay? The beginning of his way as the first of his works of old. I was set up ages ago at the first before the earth ever was. When there were no depths, I was brought forth. When there were no springs heavy with water, okay, I was brought forth. His only brought forth son. His only brought forth son. I was brought forth. He wasn't always with the father in the sense that he is eternal. He was brought forth. Yah is the only eternal one. His name, Yad He Wahe, <coughs> from the root word Achaya, Achye, Esher, Echye, I will be what I will be, or existence is existence. Yahweh, Baruch Hashem, means the eternal one, the self existing one. His son's name, Yahoshua, which you see the name Yah in him, as was told, means Yah is salvation. The eternal is salvation. Yahoshua is just the instrument through which salvation was achieved or redemption was re achieved. Help. Okay. When there were no depths, I was brought forth. When there were no springs heavy with water. Before the mountains were sunk, before the hills, I was brought forth. Before he made the earth and the fields or the first dust of the world. When he prepared the heavens, I was there. When he inscribed a circle on the face of the deep, when he set the clouds above, when he made the fountains of the deep strong, when he gave the sea its law so that the waters would not transgress its mouth, when he inscribed the foundations of the earth, then I was beside him a master workman, and I was his delight day by day, rejoicing before him all the time, rejoicing in the world, his earth, and my delights were the sons of men. Listen to that. He was brought forth. Okay. So he was the beginning of the creation of Elohim. Okay. Verse 14. He says, I know your works. And let's make it a little more clear. Let's look at uh, Hebrews chapter 1, verse 2 and verse 3. And understand this. Understand this. Let's understand this. Elohim, verses 1 through 3. Elohim, having of old spoken in many portions and many ways to the fathers by the prophets, has in these last days spoken to us by the Son, whom he has appointed heir of all, through whom also he made the ages, who, being the brightness of the esteem and the exact representation of his substance, and sustaining all by the word of his power, Having made a cleansing of our sins through himself, sat down at the right hand of the greatness on high. Okay. Being the brightness of the esteem. Okay. So this was like a reflection. Okay. And an exact representation. All my boys, they, they look like me. Okay. He, they represent me as well. An exact representation. Okay. This is an imprint. Okay, this is not the actual substance itself, but it is a representation of the substance, which was pleased to dwell within him. The substance was pleased to dwell within him, but that does not mean that that substance is actually him. Okay, he was a vessel of that substance. Okay, <clears throat> this is what we have to understand. And throughout his ministry, he let people know the father was greater than he was. Okay. Okay. And the oneness, the Yehud with the father he shared was one in mission, one in vision, one in purpose. OK, not one in being. And we'll get to that because we have some things to do to get into that. OK. Uh, so in uh, verse 14, we, we read that there. We're going to go to verse 17. Uh, with lukewarm again to think about uh, Laodicea they had some springs they were known for their springs they were they were uh, a very beautiful natural reserve for spring water and uh, one of the things that the springs they had some hot springs but what purpose is a hot spring if it's not hot right and so this analogy was used to the Laodicean assembly to paint a picture about how their worship was not ardent, was not zealous. Okay, they got kind of lax and, uh, you know, they just went through the rituals, but they weren't really on fire for serving the Father. 
Okay, so that's what that illusion, a uh, illusion is for. When you read verses fifteen and sixteen, your works are now lukewarm. They're not hot. You're not hot. For, you're not on fire for the Father anymore. I don't see the fire burning in your eyes, and I gotta. There's some people that I've dealt with that have fallen off, unfortunately, that we got to get back. You know, um, one of them even quoted himself saying, not quoted, he said himself that, you know, my, my fires have burned out. I mean, that's kind of scary. So, I mean, what do we have to do to make sure that our people are on fire and zealous for Yah and, and what he has done for us, you know, and what he has prepared for us? So, I mean... It's, 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 it's kind of scary, especially in time that we live and we can see these signs just so evident before us. Okay. So you say, rich I am, verse 17, speaking to these Laodiceans, and need none at all, do not know that you are wretched and pitiable and poor and blind and naked. Okay. Uh, let's go to Isaiah 6. Well, first, let's go to Genesis 3. We're going to go to Genesis 3 and look at this. Because this is what is going on. This is what is going on. This is uh, verses 8 through uh, 11. It says, And they heard the voice of Yah walking about in the garden in the cool of the day. And Adam and his wife hid themselves from the presence of Yah among the presence of Yah Elohim among the trees of the garden. And Yah Elohim called unto Adam and said to him, Where are you? And he said, I heard your voice in the garden, and I was afraid because I was naked, so I hid myself. And he said, Who made you know that you were naked? Have you eaten of the tree of which I commanded you that you should not eat? Okay. So they were naked and pitiable right there. Okay. They had done something they weren't supposed to do, and as a result of them doing something they're not supposed to do, their fires were taken. Their light was removed. Their garments became defiled. Right. Right. And they weren't worthy of the walk with Elohim anymore. They had separated themselves, okay? And so, uh, Isaiah 6 now. I'm going to look at Isaiah 6 and see what this says. <clears throat> this is Isaiah 6, and we're doing verses 9 and 10. This is, and he said, Go, and you shall say to this people, Hearing you hear, but do not understand. And seeing you see, but do not know. Good morning. Make the heart of this people fat and their ears heavy, and shut their eyes, lest they see with their eyes, and hear with their ears, and understand with their heart, and shall turn and be healed. Okay, so people think that they see, they think they hear, they think they understand. They really don't, unfortunately, and as a result, they're not able to turn and to be healed, and understand turn and be healed. Okay. This is what people who are, you know, sitting in places of power and, 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 and wealth and things of that nature and think that they have um, ascertained all these great status symbols, not knowing that they are wretched, okay? And so uh, they think they have an understanding. This is also including those who are, like, educated and have been indoctrinated and inseminated in this institutional uh, satanic kingdom, Luciferian kingdom, because uh, all these corporations and institutions in this world really fall under the throne of Satan or Satan. And uh, this is why Yahushua, when he operated, he operated from a grass root. He operated from a grass root. And that's what we have to get back to. We got to get back to the grass root, to the earth, and take back the kingdom. Okay? That's what this is about. So he goes on to say, I advise you to buy from me gold refined in the fire so that you become rich. Okay? Let's look at gold refined in the fire. We're going to go to uh, Psalm 19. Psalm 19. Excuse me. We're going to look at verses 7 through 14. We're going to read the whole thing. It says, The Torah of Yah is perfect, bringing back the beam. Okay? So this is also something that can restore this blindness, this nakedness, uh, 
what else are they dealing with? This uh, this poverty, this wretchedness, and this pitiableness. Okay, so the Torah of Yah is perfect, bringing back the being. The witness of Yah, which is a, another synonym for Torah, the witness of Yah is trustworthy, making wise the simple. The orders of Yah are straight, rejoicing the heart. The command of Yah is clear, enlightening the eyes. There's your eye salve. Okay. The fear of Yah is clean, standing forever. There's your garments. The right rulings of Yah are true. They are all they are righteous altogether. More desirable than gold. There's your gold you purchase. Than much fine gold. And sweeter than honeycomb. And the sweeter than honey and the honeycomb. Also your servant is warned by them. And guarding them there is great reward. Who discerns mistakes? Declare me innocent from those that are secret. Also keep your servant back from presumptuous ones. Do not let them rule over me. Then I shall be perfect and innocent of great transgression. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be pleasing before you, O Yah, my rock and my redeemer. We're going to go to Proverbs 27, 21 now. Because this is the goal that you purchased here. Now we're going to look at something else. 27, 21. <clears throat> It says this, a refining pot is for silver and a furnace for gold. So a man is tried by his praise. Okay. There's your fire again. If you're on fire for Yah and you're going to praise him, even in storms, you're going to pray continuously. Okay. This is what this is talking about. Okay. Uh, so buy white garments so that you become dressed so that your name so that shame of your nakedness might not be shown and we hadn't even gone over that I completely skipped that we're going to look at Revelation uh, 19 right these uh, white garments here it goes this is Revelation 19 8 and to her it was given to be dressed in fine linen clean and bright for the fine linen is the righteousness of the set apart ones. This is what that uh, that the dressing is fine linen, okay, which is symbolic of righteousness. Really, this is understood as the garments of light that we shall be wearing, which is what Adam wore before he realized he was naked. He was covered in light. You see Moshe coming down from the mount. After fasting 40 days and 40 nights on Sinai to receive the oracles of the Father, had to cover his face with the robe to hide himself from the people who were afraid of his presence that was aglow with the Father's presence upon him. You see the Mount of Transfiguration where Eliyahu, Moshe, and Yahushua were transformed into light beings, okay? This is why Yahushua's eyes were like flames of fire and his face shown as the sun in full strength because his being of light had returned okay well his being of light never really left our being of light had returned but think about this right our bodies are 75 percent composed of water we have an electrical current running through our bodies that you can actually you know feel at times when you touch a door handle or touch somebody's sweater or somebody else and you get shocked right when our heart stops, they use a defibrillator, which is an electrical current, and they say clear, and they send that shock through our bodies to resuscitate our heart. So if you think about it, we're electrochemical plants or beings. Our bodies are regularly 98.6 degrees. You go outside on a 98.6 degree day, that's a hot day. So we have a, a, a fire that burns in us, a sun that burns in us. Okay, and so our bodies are supposed to shine. And you ever notice someone who has an aura about them? Anyway, they come in the room, they light the room up. They may not even say anything, but their presence just makes the the room light up. Okay. And then on the flip side, you got people who are so dark that they can do that because our bodies are are energies. It's an energy center. It's an energy plant. Okay. Again, we're electrochemical plants spiritual beings in flesh okay we are a soul that is in body in a body we're not a body you know our bodies are just the expression of who we are who we are is our soul which is uh the the, the spirit that courses through us and the type of and the type of spirit that courses through us 
into our body, which makes up our soul. We're spirit, soul, and body. Spirit is the life that 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 gives us life. Our soul is our personality, our our our, our temperaments, and so on. Our 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 reasoning capabilities, and our body is just the way that we are able to experience this particular manifestation through our five senses. Okay, there's more than five, but those are the basics that we have. So that's revelation there, okay? A man is tried by his praise. And uh, we're closing this out. <clears throat> um, he says in verse 19, as many as I love, I reprove and discipline, so be ardent and repent. Let's go ahead to uh, Hebrews 12, 5 through 13. As we're wrapping this thing up. Hebrews 12, 5 through 13. It reads on this lines. And you have forgotten the appeal which speaks to you as my sons, our sons. My son, do not despise the discipline of Yahweh, nor faint when you are reproved by him. For whom Yah loves, he disciplines and flogs every son whom he receives. If you endure discipline, Elohim is treating you as sons. For what son is there whom a father does not discipline? <clears throat> But if you are without discipline, of which all of you have become sharers, then you are illegitimate and not sons. Moreover, we indeed had fathers of our flesh disciplining us, and we paid them respect. Shall we not much rather be subject to the father of spirits and live? For they indeed disciplined us for a few days as seemed best to them, but he does it for our profit, so that we might share his apartness. And indeed, no discipline seems pleasing, pleasant at the time, but grievous. But afterward, it yields the peaceable fruit of righteousness to those who have been trained by it. So strengthen the hands which have hang down and the weak knees and make straight paths for your feet, lest the lame be turned aside, but instead be healed. We've got a couple more verses, okay, we're going to get to. We're going to go now to verse 20. Look at this verse. Stand at the door and knock, and if anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I shall come to him and dine with him and he with me. Let's look at John 17 as we wrap this up with one more verse. <clears throat> John 17, we're looking at verses 18 through 23. It says, as you sent me into the world, I also sent them into the world. As for them, I set myself apart so that they too might be set apart in truth. And I do not pray for these alone, but also for those believing in me through their word, so that they all might be one as you, Father, are in me and I in you, so that they too might be one in us, so that the world might believe that you have sent me. And the esteem which you gave me, I have given them, so that, I, so that they might be one as we are one, I in them and you in me, so that they might be perfected into one, so that the world knows that you have sent me. And I have loved them as you have loved me. Okay, so now we're going to close with this verse here. To him who overcomes, I shall give to him to sit with me on my throne, as I also overcame and sat down with my father on his throne. Let's look at um, <clears throat> 2 Timothy chapter 2, verses 11. I believe that's through 15. Um, but this I and him and I and them and you and me, this is all about that oneness, okay? It's much like a marriage. It's the secret of matrimony, um, the one flesh. As the husband and wife are one flesh, they're two beings. They become one in mind. They become one in purpose. They become one in vision and mission and goal, so on and so forth, okay? But now we are to sit with on the throne that the father sits on, that the son sits on his father's throne, and uh, we are to rule with him. How do we know that? This last verse here. <clears throat> 2 Timothy 11, uh, chapter 2, 11 through 15. It says, Trustworthy is the word, for if we died with him, we shall also live with him. If we endure, we shall also reign with him. If we deny him, he also shall deny us. If we are not trustworthy, he remains trustworthy. It is impossible for him to deny himself. Remind them of this, earnestly witnessing before the master not to wage verbal battles, which is useless to the overthrowing of the hearers. Do your utmost to present yourself approved to Elohim, a worker who does not need to be ashamed, rightly handling the word of truth. Let him who has ears hear what the Spirit says 
to the assemblies. Okay, so now as we wrap up these seven assemblies and notice that each of the seven assemblies had a characteristic of uh, the sun ascribed to it. Um, this is in relationship to uh, either the judgment that will come to it or the 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 esteem that will come to it. They will either face the judgment of that characteristic or they will either face the esteem of that characteristic and receive it. And so um, this is relation related to all of us as we seek to serve our father in spirit and truth. I pray that this particular chapter of Revelation has brought inspiration and insight to you and yours. Um, you know, as we close out, we say, Shalom. May Yah bless you and keep you. May Yah cause His countenance to shine upon you, be kind unto you. May Yah lift up His face unto you and give you peace. One love. Shalom Alechem.